Hi, and welcome to another tech story. In this session, we will take on such an interesting project. We will create a home lab using our local PC and VMware workstation. And by home lab, I mean a virtualization lab. We will be installing an SXE server, in fact, two SXE servers and a vCenter appliance on top of that. In later sessions, we will create a DNS server, DNS cache, primary and secondary, a domain controller, a Windows database server and a Linux database server and a web server, among other things. Here we can see this preliminary diagram of the environment we will be creating. We have our local PC here and on top of that we have VMware Workstation installed already. It's a Windows PC. On top of VMware Workstation we will create two VMs and on each VM we will install SXE server. After we install both SXE servers we will install a vCenter appliance and of course before that we will install a domain controller a Windows domain controller to be specific, Windows Server 2016. In later sessions, as I mentioned, we will create an internal IT infrastructure environment using our uh, virtualization lab. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here I have my VMware workstation. I will start by creating a new virtual machine. Of course, before you do this, you need to download the SXE your SXE server to your computer and in order to do this you simply open your browser go to google.com and search for VMware SXE server download you will be directed to VMware website where you will be asked to register you need to register an account to be able to download it's a free account and you're gonna get about two months of trial after that you need to download also uh, vCenter appliance from the same website. So here I clicked on File, New, Virtual Machine, and I will choose, I will install the operating system later. Next, I'm going to use VMware SXE, it's going to be 6. Point something. I think it's 6.7, I'm not sure, the one I downloaded. Hit Next. And here I have hard drive here, SXE1 and SXE2 uh, folders already created. If you don't, just create a folder uh, wherever you want on your hard drive. And I'm going to call this one SXE1. Hit next. Now here's an interesting part. For this virtualization lab, I will be using my network attached storage to uh, create VMs. But if you have a directly attached storage, which simply means just a hard drive within your computer, you need to have half of the hard disk space here. So you would be able to use it in your SXE server to create virtual machine. Since I'm not doing that, and I'm just going to leave it at 40 gigabytes, hit next. I'm going to customize hardware. Now in order for you to create a good sized virtualization lab, you will need a decent PC. In my case, I have a Ryzen 7300 with 8 cores. I have 64 gigabytes of RAM. I have an attached network storage with 4 terabytes. I will only take 1 terabyte of that. The recommended specs that I would recommend or the minimum specs that I would recommend for this environment would be a processor with at least 4 to 6 cores. I would recommend 6 but I think you would get away with four depending on the size of lab you're gonna be creating. 16 to 32 gigabytes of RAM, again, depending on the size of virtualization lab you will be creating, maybe starting with 500 gigabytes of hard disk space. So here I will choose 20 gigabytes as my uh, RAM for SXE1. I will give this eight virtual cores. There we go. I will choose my image. And here's the image I will be using. Now let's go to the network part of this. Now if this was a real environment, I would say you would have to create VLAN for each network. You would have most likely about four or five networks. Your management network, which will only have your SXE servers and vCenter maybe, maybe your domain controller. You'll have your VM network, which will only have VMs uh, that you create. You will have vMotion, 
to move resources from one S60 server to the next and you will have storage and in some cases you will have a fault tolerance network. But since this is a home lab, we will be just using one network for all of this. Here, I will just choose bridged and that's it. Hit close, hit finish and now let's power up our SXE machine. And at this point, your SXE server should start installing directly. Now, installing an SXE server is, is pretty much a straightforward endeavor. So this will take a little bit. I will pause and I will return at the next step. And there we go. So here, just asking me if I want to continue. And I'm going to hit enter to continue. I'm going to accept the license agreement by hitting F11 on my keyboard. And again, it will take couple of minutes for this to finish. Now it's asking what disk to use. I will choose the virtual disk we created and I will just leave the keyboard as is. Here you just enter your password. Now keep note of your password because this is how you're going to log in later to your, um, to your SXE server. Hit enter. Now it's asking me if I want to install and I'm going to hit F11 to install. Now again, this will take a little time, so I will pause and return once it's done. Fantastic. So now the installation is complete and I was asked to restart and I just hit enter. So now that that is done, let's move on to the next phase of this project, which is configuring the network or making sure that it's working. So the first thing you want to do is go to edit, virtual, Network Editor, Change Settings. Yes. Now the reason that we're doing this is that we want to make sure that we're bridging to the right interface. Now I have disabled all my interfaces and I just left the one that I'm connected on enabled. So when you open this, just add a network. Click OK. It's probably going to be VMNet 0 if you didn't uh, create another network before. Otherwise, it will be uh, an increment of that. After you do, just hit bridged. Uh, you can click on the actual interface or leave it at automatic and then change the automatic settings to make sure which interface you are connected on. If you're not sure which, just hit uh, start menu on R, type ncpa.cpl to check your interfaces. Now, as you can see, in my case, I have disabled all interfaces and left just one open or one that is enabled. And I'm connected to that and hit OK to save that. Then go to your SXE server, right click, click settings and network adapter. And as we did in the beginning, you can just do bridged. But in case that didn't work, Click on custom and choose the network that you created. In my case, it's VMNet 0. So now that that's done, I don't want this to have a DHCP IP address because I want it to be static to be able to reach it whenever I want. So it won't change every now and then. So in order to change the network settings, just hit F2 on your keyboard, type your password, go down to configure, Management Network, IP version 4, Configuration, and highlight Set Static IP version 4 by highlighting and I'm pressing the space bar key in your keyboard. Then you type down the IP address you want and that depends on your actual, uh, your actual network prefix that you have or subnet that you have. In my case, I have 10, 10, 10, slash 24. So, here I've chosen 10.10.10.2.2.1 as my IP address with slash 24 and I'm using my router slash firewall as my gateway. Hit OK and after you hit OK you can hit escape. You will be prompted by a yes or no to apply. Uh, you press on Y in your keyboard to apply. After you do that we are ready to log in to our SXE server. So just type the IP address here. Make sure you use HTTPS, not HTTP. So here I'm going to enter root as my username and the password I have chosen. Hit enter. Fantastic. I'm not going to join VMware customer experience. Hit OK. As you can see, we have a 60 days trial. Here are 
my specifications. First thing we're going to do is go to networking and create the needed network configuration. As we mentioned, since this is a lab environment, I'm just going to have one virtual switch. I'm not going to have separate ones because we only have one uplink. Here we have our management network here and a VM network already created. Now we want a vMotion port group and a storage port group. Of course, if you have a directly attached storage, you don't need a storage port group. So I'm going to create vMotion. Yes. And storage and same switch. And finally, I'm going to create a secondary management port group. And I will say why in a minute. Now, of course, um, in this case, VM network and management network is the same. Uh, it's going to be the same IP span or, net, uh, or subnet. So in a lab environment, you don't really need it. But to simulate the real environment as much as possible, we're going to create a port group for each one. Now the next thing we're going to do is go to VM kernel and create and create VM kernel. Now the port group that has an associated VM kernel cannot be attached to a virtual, uh, a virtual machine. So that's why we created, we have our VM network, which will not have an attached VM kernel nor management. So here we're going to create vMotion. This is going to be vMotion. And I'm just going to leave it at DHCP, create. I'm going to have a storage also. Where is my storage? There. Create. There we go. And yeah, that's it. So we're just waiting on the storage to get an IP address. Now that we got these IP addresses, I would recommend making it permanent. So I will go to vMotion, edit settings and just copy the IP address I was given by my DHCP server. There, it's already written there, so I'm just going to save it to make it permanent. I will do the same thing for my storage, VM kernel. And there we go. Now that that's done, we are basically done with our SXE server. So the next part that we will do, or the next step that we will do, is to connect our network attached storage. Now, if you have a direct attached storage, so feel free to skip this part. On the other hand, I don't, so I will be connecting my network storage. Here is my Synology NAS, and I'm gonna open my iSCSI manager. I'm gonna create a target, just leave it at target one. Create new iSCSI LUN, yes please. I will take one terabyte. Now we'll have it as thick provisioning just to have it reserved. Hit next and apply. Now, as we can see, our LUN and target was created with one terabyte. Now let's open our settings just to double check some things. We go to advanced and we want to allow multiple sessions because as you remember, we're creating two SXE servers, so they're both going to be connected simultaneously. So I will check this, hit OK, and there we go. And here is the IP address for my Synology. I'll go back to my SXE server, go to Adapters, configure iSCSI adapter. I'm going to enable this. I didn't create any chat authentication. So I'll just add my port, which is my VM kernel that I created. Here's my storage VM kernel. Select. And I'm going to add a static target, which is this name. I'm just going to call this NAS. Add dynamic. Same. Now this can be tricky sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't work on the first try for some reason. So hit cancel, refresh, double check. And as we can see, it has connected. I'm not really sure why it doesn't work like this and you get an error. I think it's something to do with SXE or this version of SXE. As you can see, we have our target name. Uh, it was acquired. 
from this IP address. So it means we are connected. We're going to go to data stores. We're going to create a new data store. Hit next. And there we go. Here is our target or iSCSI target. Hit next. All right. We need to provide a name. We're just going to call this NAS1. Hit next. We're going to use full desk. Yes. And finish. Yes. And there we go. Fantastic. Now this is done. I'm not going to show the process for creating SXE2 because it's basically the same process. After I finish creating SXE2, in the next session, we will be installing a domain controller on our SXEs and then vCenter appliance and join both SXE1 and SXE2 into one data center. I know this has been a long session, but it's a lot of moving parts to put together. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. Please share, leave a like, subscribe, and see you in the next session.